He is one of the men behind the success of Berkshire Hathaway, known by many as an iconic investor who once questioned his career path, made changes, and now sits on a billion dollar fortune. In today's episode, we will discuss the life of Charlie Munger. Charlie was born in 1924. Young Charlie learned the importance of reading from his mother. His father's profession was something Charlie was inspired by. He worked at Buffett & Son, a grocery store owned by Warren Buffett's grandfather. Although he never did cross paths with Warren as a child, working at the store helped him connect with the man who has changed the way we look at investing today. Charlie was accepted at the University of Michigan in 1941 and packed his bags for the campus. But then on December 7, 1941, a surprise attack was launched by Japan at Pearl Harbor. Over 460 bombs were dropped in just 75 minutes. 2,400 Americans lost their lives. 19 Navy ships were destroyed, of which 8 were battleships. The once divided nation was now united. 97% of Americans walked out in support of their military. Many decided to join the U.S. Army. One of the men was Charlie Munger. He left school to enlist in the Army Air Corps, where he was trained as a weatherman to help gather data on oceans, rivers, snow, and terrain. As he recalls it, the training changed his life, physiologically and emotionally. During his training, he met his first wife. At the end of World War II, Charlie, Nancy, their son, and two daughters moved to California. He decided to follow in his dad's footsteps and joined a law firm, Wright and Garrett. After eight years of marriage, the Mungers divorced. Many of his close friends say that Charlie moved into a dreadful condition. The children live with their mother but remain close to their father. Around this time, Charlie also decided to invest in a business by buying part of a troubled transformer company owned by one of his legal clients. The transition brought some financial pressure on Charlie. Then things went from bad to worse when he found out that his 9-year-old son was diagnosed with leukemia. Charlie was devastated. He moved into a bachelor apartment and drove a yellow Pontiac. He worked crazy hours all week to recover the money he had lost in the divorce. His kids would visit him on weekends where their favorite activity was to visit the zoo. But a trip to the zoo was a discomforting trip as he had to drive with kids in a lousy looking Pontiac. His daughter would often ask, Daddy, this car is just awful, a mess, why do you drive it? To which he would reply, To discourage gold diggers. And knowing his son had leukemia, weekly family visits were even harder. Leukemia had grown to a stage where it was incurable. He sat in the hospital ward, watching his child closing his eyes every day in pain. Having no medical insurance, Charlie paid for expenses out of pocket. He saw his son getting weaker every day. For two months, Charlie would visit the hospital, watch his son in bed, slowly dying. He would hold him for a while, then go out walking, wondering if only he could do something. Sadly, one year after the diagnosis, at nine years old, his son passed away, leaving Charlie heartbroken. 31 now, he was divorced, broke, and after burying a nine-year-old, he was questioning his career choices. As time went on, he found Nancy Berry, who also had two children from a previous marriage. Charlie's kids from his first marriage and his stepkids from his second marriage started living under one roof. But then he heard that his father had passed away. He returned home to Nebraska to support his family through challenging times. While he was helping them, he ran into Warren Buffett through his connections from the grocery store. The two had hit it off and kept in touch as Charlie returned back to California. After returning, he left his job and started his own law firm focused on real estate. But it would not be long before he stopped practicing law entirely to focus on investment management. He founded an investment firm called The Wheeler, Munger & Company. 
The firm made big losses during 1973 to 1974, which forced him to completely stop his investment partnership in 1976. Losses faced by the company were about 32%. He and Buffett would spend hours on the phone, analyzing every purchase on what had happened and how they could improve it. By 1978, Charlie joined Berkshire Hathaway, a company that was purchased by Warren Buffett in 1965. Charlie took over the role of a business partner and investment advisor. He sharpened his investor skills and finally, his investments started delivering an annual return of 20%, which was four times the average market rate. At 52, he went through another life-changing incident. He had developed cataracts. A failed surgery left him blind in one eye. Suffering from pain in his left eye, he asked doctors to remove his eye completely. He was told that there is a chance of losing the other eye as well. Fearful of the possibility, he started taking braille lessons so that he could keep up with his reading and make wise investing choices. The duo started acquiring companies rapidly in the late 1970s and through the 80s. They expanded their horizons by investing in companies like Geico, Gillette, US Air, Coca Cola. In 1977, Charlie purchased the Daily Journal, a publishing company. A man who lost everything after a divorce, who walked on the streets crying, feeling helpless because he couldn't save his son who was fearful of losing his sight completely due to a failed operation, ended up creating investment rules that are used by many around the world today. Until next time, have a good one.